We're going to now do our first session and you can either work with me step by step or just watch the video and work on your computer later. This is the main screen as it loads from uh, stand-in and it's called the default arrangement and it's up there. And this can be changed and personalized to your own use. But uh, let's, for the purpose of this, let's make sure it's going to react the way I want it to react. My first job is to make sure that the metronome is going to give me my counting that I like to work with. And by double clicking on click, a central box will come up. A thousand different users of Cubase will use in a thousand different ways. But I like to use with the MIDI click off because I have the metronome in the computer to guide me. I like to work with the pre-roll on as well. This will give me two bars running on the sequencer before it goes into record. Okay, now I'm happy with that. I can actually OK that. I also like to work with the inspector closed down. The main reason for this is I can look into that later. It gives me more space on the screen to see my song. I would like to work with my automatic quantize on. And I like to work in punch mode. You have choice of three here. You have mix, punch, and normal. I'll explain the difference. Mix will mix the data as it cycles round and punch will automatically go into record. So if I make a mistake at the end of the bar, next time round when I play, it will automatically punch in. Or normal will record first time and then stop. So I've selected punch. Further to this, I like to use the cycle mode to record. And I also like to always start at bar three. This is in case, for some reason, I need an intro uh, before the counting. The other factor I want to change is these tracks from 1 to 16. I want to actually put in the sounds that I'm going to deal with and the MIDI channels and its device outputs. Let's check how it comes with the boot up program. There's the instrument section, which is blank because we haven't customized it yet. And there's the output section, which is talking to the Atari. Of course, if you have one of the MIDI devices, to actually select them, and that would be your output device. first thing to do is actually name the tracks that you want to use and I'm going to start customizing it to what I want to see. And you can name these tracks in any order that you like. So I'm going to go straight to my default setup. So I've named the titles that I want to work with. And I have one other function to do because I'm going to work in cycle mode. I want to actually, rather than overdub, I want to replace. This uh, links up with the punch facility I've used up here. The idea is that uh, as it cycles round, if I make a mistake, I can actually just start playing at any one point and it will go into record. You'll find this a very fast way to work. So what do I need? Bar 3, left locator, to bar 5. And I'm going to select my hi-hat track because I want to do a counting. Let's do the first recording now. As you can hear, it's cycling round, and that's my counting. I'm happy with that, so I don't have to do anything else. Stop the computer. You can either stop the computer using there, or I'm using the space bar, or zero on the keyboard. Next thing I need to do is to build up a basic bass drum pattern. So I'm going to use the next four bars for this. So I'm going to move my right locator, right mouse, and my left locator, left mouse. And I'm on the kick track now. Let's just record this. If I'm not happy, at any one point I can go into record. And I'll show you that when I do the bass. Now if I like, without stopping, I can actually move down to the next track. Either click with the mouse here, or I can use the up and down arrows to change from track to track. I moved on to the snare track, and I want to hear it, so I'll unmute it, and add the track. I'm happy with that. Let's move on to some hi-hats. Next track down. Now 
now this time I played the first half but not the second half so I'll drop in If I press the space bar, I can stop and I can hear my result. Let's run right back. Uh, running backwards and forwards, of course, as we talked before, is left and right mouse. If you want a shortcut for that, you can actually do it with the open brackets and closed bracket signs which are located above the 7-8 key on the Atari keyboard. The closed bracket will move forward and the, and the open bracket will move backwards. Also, I'm going to use, instead of play here, a shortcut on the on the keyboard which is enter next thing I'd like to build up is maybe a tom tom intro so I can move to the tom track and I want to do the bar just before it comes in so I'm gonna place my locator points over that section into record I'm going to go into record either using this key here or the star or asterisk at the top right of the number keyboard. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. Next thing I want to do is hit a cymbal beat on the first beat of the bar. So I'm going to move down to my cymbal track and relocate my locators left and right there because I want to actually come in here with the opening symbol crash let's record that two bar count in again okay I have the basis of a drum pattern I'm going to select the bass guitar track now and uh, show you how the punch facility works in cycle hit record we have a two bar count in, I'm going to do my bass track. Yeah, at the end of the four bar pattern I've made a mistake and simply by playing the MIDI keyboard it would automatically drop in the record. That's my mistake and I'm hoping to repair it this time. mistake has been taken away and automatically dropped in. Okay, I'm quite happy with that, I'm going to keep that. If I'd have been using in cycle mode instead of replace overdub, it would have added the two performances together, but I wanted to do this automatic drop-in facility, that's why we're using replace. So I'm happy with my four bar groove, next thing I want to do is to move on to the next section up here. So what I want to do is not record this all again, I want to actually copy this. And as we talked about in the first part of the video, we simply select by clicking on with the left mouse. If I want to select other items, I hold the shift key on the keyboard and select away. These are all now selected and by holding the alternate key down, I can click on and drag to wherever I would like. Obviously that's in the wrong position, so I can simply drag it back. Now. I click away from those and they're deselected. What I want to do is actually, in the next four bars, add my piano. So I want to move my left and right locators over here. Remember, the right mouse for the right locator and the left mouse for the left locator. I'd like to win mention one other function here whilst we're talking about locators moving, and that's to the top right over here. This is the snap pop-up menu. Uh, currently it says bar, and if I click on with the left mouse you see this pop-up menu to choose. I can actually take the snap off and if I move, click with the left mouse, I can actually move this and leave it anywhere in between and if we take a look right down at the left locator down the bottom we will see these numbers automatically changing as I move the left locator backwards and forwards and as you see wherever I leave it the quantize value 192144. Okay if we go back to the snap box and see the other functions in the pop-up menu we have the choice of snap to the bar or snap to a half beat, quarter beat, eighth note or sixteenth note. Normally this would be left on bar because that, that's the normal routine. Just to the right of this snap box is our mouse box and at the moment it's blank if I move the, the cursor into the 
window you can see it actually changing on what bar that we're looking at and in conjunction with the snap box if I set it to off you will see the mouse actually give exactly where I'm pointing this is helpful for picking tracks up and dropping them in and knowing exactly where you are further to the right we have a quantize box inside the quantize box we have the value 16 this is 16 notes so the automatic quantize is slotting my mistakes into 16 notes exactly I can click on the number and choose a different value maybe 8 notes or quarter notes 4 beats to the bar we also have the facility to actually switch it off completely and have a completely free form if you're going to play some complicated jazz chords and you want to get your whole performance and you don't want it quantized then switch it off also we have triplet values here and also dotted note values this side right I have my first four bars intro and I've copied across to the next four bars and I'd like to add my piano track so I'm going to select the piano track there I'm going to actually switch the quantize off for this just to show you how badly I can play the piano here we go into record <laughs> So if you're a piano player and you want to get the nuances of your style, then this is the way to work out of quantize. So I've recorded my piano, such as it is, and what I want to do is actually add a symbol here. I could, uh, I could go there with the left and right locator and just record it, but I might as well copy this one here. So click on it, hold alternate down on the keyboard, and drag it into the position I want. Um, maybe my toms as well. Let's click on that, alternate down, copy it across. As you can see, you can build up your track really fast like this. Let's play that. <laughs> it's cycling around that part. If I don't want to cycle, I have to switch cycle off. Let's run back a little bit and play again. Right, this brings me on to one of the most important things about computer sequences. You need to save your result. If this computer for any reason should switch off, then you've lost your song. So let's go through the facility how you save and load your song. What we will need to do first of all is format a disk. I put a disk in the disk drive. This disk is already formatted but if it wasn't I can uh, easily format by going to one of these file menus and go down here and you'll see format disk. If I click on this you'll get a box up and simply choose which drive we're in. In this case we're in drive A and if it's single sided or double sided disk. This is already set on the outside of the disk if it's a single or double sided disk and simply click on here and you will format a new disk. This following procedure is how we save and load songs in and out of Cubase. In the file menu once again, the drop down menus give us several options. In this case we want to save. Click on that with the left mouse and you've got a selection file type box up. It's worth noting if this box says save or load and many files have been lost in many sessions by not noticing you've actually said load instead of save. You have a choice of seven options here and this can be from song file to arrangement file or a single part or a MIDI file. The last two are drum maps for the edit screens and your basic setup. This is how you would save if you've customized your own setup to disk. You can click on this and save your custom setup. In this case we want to save a song which can be up to 16 different arrangements. Click on one Now the next box that comes up will depend on what computer system you're working on. This is the Atari's TRS system box. If it's Macintosh then you, of course you will get the Macintosh set up. Now if you look, it looks a bit complicated but it's basically saying in disk drive A it's looking for a file extension called all which is the file extension for song. So in this next line, the selection, I can actually name my song and simply by either backspacing to take it all away or escape key I can type in a title. So in this case we'll call it Song 1. Imaginative, but there you go. And clicking on OK, this will save our song to our disk as a song file. When it's complete, the box will close and we'll be back to our main screen. 
Just to show you how we would load that again, go back up to the file menu and this time choose open. And the selection file type box will come up again. This time you notice the word load. And we're going to choose one, which is our song. Click on there. And you will notice a prompt box has come up saying stop. It's a warning sign to say that if you try and load the song, you will erase the song already in situ in the computer. So we can either cancel or OK it. You notice out of these two boxes that there's a thicker line around the OK box. This is indicated if you hit return or enter on the keyboard, it will select that one. So in this case, in this case we're going to click on OK. Now this is the Atari box again, the TOS system. And you might be able to notice at the back the song that we're working on has been erased already, waiting for me to select a new song. I can sim simply click on the song one and OK it, or double click on the song. The disk icon comes up to show it's being loaded. If you should want to save it as an arrangement, you can do that as well under the file menu again, save. The select box will come up and this time we're going to choose number two, arrangement. Now all songs can have 16 arrangements. This is the way we can actually load many arrangements in the computer at the same time and save them later as a song, 16 different arrangements. So double click on arrangement. I'm going to save it as an arrangement this time. Let's call it song one. Click on OK. And you'll see the extension is ARR this time. The difference between the two functions is simply that if you save song, you save all the functions, all the setup functions, all the parameters that you preset. If you load a, and save an arrangement, you're just loading the data and its tracks. When you load an arrangement in, you can actually choose between them very simply under the Windows menu at the top here. This ticked item here is the song that we have in situ in the computer. I can easily change to another arrangement by clicking on this one. This is DEF1, the one we did earlier. The whole screen has changed and as you can see it says DEF1 arrangement at the top. And let's just show you that I can actually play this and show you a different track. And simply switch back very quickly to the, the song that we currently were working on. So you can clearly hear the difference between these two arrangements. You can even paste between arrangements. I can select by the rubber band system and copy this. This is another function under edit this time. Copy and select another arrangement, the DEF1 arrangement. I'll find an area somewhere up here with my left locator and actually paste that in as you would do with a word processor. Let's paste that in under edit, paste function, click there. And you can see that the other arrangement has been added to this arrangement. This is very versatile and very quick to use. In my experience of programming, I find that uh, once I've added another piece of music, maybe I've copied this, this whole, and I'll deselect some parts by holding shift down. I can copy this whole thing, move it forward. Once I've recorded a major part or made a major change, I like to save it again. So I've got all the versions. And a good idea is to, when you save this time, save, select arrangement, is to do one of two things either call it a different title and you can do that by backspacing and call it perhaps song 2 version 2 and save or you can keep the same title again and when you go to say save it will give give you a prompt to ask you if you want to replace or back this up if you replace it would totally replace that file with this new one if you back it up it will not only write this new one but it also make a backup of that arrangement and it will be called ARB it's always best to be safe when using sequences. Now you might think we've saved this backup file, but where is it? Now it's specially kept out of sight because you probably won't need it, but if you do need to find it, you must tell it what file extension to look for. And we can click on this directory line here, and there's the cursor, and actually backspace and change this to B. And if I click on this dotted area, we will read the backup file, and here it is. 
If I want to see everything that's on this disk, I can simply click on the directory line, backspace, and replace it with an asterisk like that. This time it will search for any file at all. Click there, and we see our original all that we saved, the backup file, and the new arrangement we saved. Remember with sequences to save as you go, it's very important. We're now going to talk about the edit windows in part three. This third section of the video, we're going to deal with the edit screens for Cubase.